What's going on YouTube? It's Dylan James. On today's episode, we're going to be talking about the NBA playoffs and the top five playoff performers in the card market so far. So the NBA playoffs started on May 22nd, so we're about a month in at this point. We've seen some crazy action so far in these playoff games, and today we're going to be talking about the top five performances that have led to increased sales of cards and the value of cards going up for some specific players that are in the league. And you may be kind of surprised that most of the players we're talking about today are going to be veteran players and not the new age players we're used to seeing in the league recently. We're not going to be seeing a lot of players like Joel Embiid and players along those lines. We're going to be seeing players that have been playing in the league for quite some time and scarcity, as we've talked about on this channel before, is going to play a huge part in these values increasing during their playoff performances. And speaking of new age players, let's start with a rising star in the league. So number five on my list this week is none other than Devin Booker. He's been playing outstanding in this playoffs and the playoffs and this last playoff series as well. He's averaging 27 points nine points a game he's averaging almost 40 points per game as well he has been playing outstanding for the phoenix suns that's the reason why they've gotten to this position to the western conference final in the first round they played the los angeles lakers won that series four to two went on to play the denver nuggets swept that series so now they're just waiting for the western conference final to see who their opponent will be between the utah jazz and los angeles clippers that's gonna be a very interesting matchup whoever comes out of that but they're hoping that this does go into a seven game series and I'll tell you why at number four but with this player you look at Devin Booker at current values at $789.26 it is up 11.1 percent since the beginning of the playoffs which has been a great number for him even though this number has seen um, the highest sale was $1,025 for this card but still, it's evening out. It's getting to a point to where it's very steady. And that's a really, really good valuation for this card for Devin Booker. He's a rising star in this league. And I do see this card going up in value as he progresses. Even if he does go, if, if he goes into the playoffs this year and goes into the finals this year, I see this card value going up even more. But as of right now, he is number five on our list. Coming in at number four on this list is none other than Chris Paul, yet another Phoenix Sun to discuss on this week's episode. And this guy might be missing some time in the Western Conference Final, which we'll get to in just a moment. But Chris Paul has been playing quite well. Even though his numbers aren't eye-popping, he's only averaging about 15.7 points a game. He has been a playmaker on this team. He has also been a very good veteran presence for this Phoenix Suns team, especially with young players like Devin Booker. I think this guy has done great for this team, and you can see by his performance in the playoffs, his card value has gone up quite uh, quite a bit as well. From a month ago, it's gone up 21.1%. It's $122 in the change in price percentage there, but it has been going up. This card is a limited, a limited number of prints as well at a PSA 10. But with Chris Paul, he is currently in the COVID protocol. We've all seen it all season long. This is a terrible time for him to go on COVID protocol. That's the reason why they want the Clippers and Jazz to go to a seven-game series so that it gives Chris Paul some time to get out of that COVID protocol and hopefully get on the court as quickly as possible to at least contribute during the Western Conference Final. There are questions as to if this Phoenix Suns team can actually make it out of the Western Conference Final without Chris Paul on the court with them, but they're crossing their fingers that he can stay off the court for a short amount of time, rejoin the team and get back out there. And hopefully he will be able to do so, so that we can see him perform. And also he can hopefully make it to a final, which we haven't seen Chris Paul do um, in his career. So it'll be interesting to see what happens there, but all the best to Chris Paul. Hopefully he gets off that COVID protocol list soon. And the Phoenix Suns are hoping and praying as well. So the next card coming in at number three is Kevin Durant's 2007 Topps Chrome Rookie Card graded a PSA 9. Now you may be saying to yourself, Dylan, this card is actually in the negative over the past month. And you're correct. It has actually gone down in value by 16.6%. However, over the past two week span, which you can actually bring this up in the Card Base app on your desktop version, and you can look at the, the watch list for this specific card. If you look over the past 14 days, this card has actually gone up 31.8%. And one of the main reasons why is because Kevin Durant is playing at a very, very high level, especially not having Kyrie Irving and James Harden on the court. 
with Kevin Durant in game five against the Milwaukee Bucks, he scored 49 points. One of the most dominant performances we've seen this year in the NBA playoffs. Kevin Durant has been proving to everyone why he is one of the best, if not the best player in the league right now. And I believe he'll continue to do so as long as Kyrie Irving and James Harden are on the bench, even if they're not on the bench, I still think Kevin Durant will come out and prove to everyone watching that he is still a dominant force to be reckoned with in this league. And it's a pleasure to watch him every single night. He hits the court. But with this card, I still believe it's going to be going up in value. It will hit that value that it was at before. And I still think it has a lot of room to grow. So that's why he's on the list at number three. Now let's move on to number two on my list. None other than James Harden, his 2009 Topps rookie card graded at a PSA 10. This card has seen some increase as well because of the performance he's been putting up in the NBA playoffs this season. He's only played in seven games. He's actually been injured for a few games, but he was averaging 20.9 points per game, 8.7 assists, and 6.1 rebounds in the playoffs so far. And we might see him get back to the court hopefully soon so that this Brooklyn Nets team can be at their full strength going into the conference final and into the finals because we always love to see the players, the star players playing in the playoffs to see who actually is the best in the NBA. But with this card in the past month, we've seen this card go up 77.2% in value. And this is a very low population card as well. When it comes to this James Harden rookie card, it was already valued pretty high going into the playoffs. It's increased in value even more since the playoffs have been happening. I still see this card as a very, very good um, investment out there. I still think that there's going to be value, especially with the scarcity of this card. But James Harden, if he makes it back onto the court, I could see the value of this card going back, going up even further as we move forward through the NBA playoffs. And last but certainly not least on my list, number one is Paul George and his 2010 Don Russ rated rookie card graded at a PSA 10. This guy has been playing at a very, very high level this offseason. We see the combination of him and Kawhi Leonard on the court. They've been playing outstanding for the Los Angeles Clippers. We'll see if they can make it to the Western Conference Final against the Phoenix Suns. But as of right now, Paul George is playing at a very, very high level. It's, it's reminiscent of what we saw in Indianapolis with the Pacers. I still think that this card has seen some huge growth over the past month. As you can see here, 84.8% increase in value since the beginning of the playoffs. This guy has been playing at an elite level, and Kawhi Leonard has helped his case there in Los Angeles as well. Kawhi Leonard has been going off quite a bit too. But like I said before, it seems as though the cards with the most scarcity and the more veteran players are actually seeing better numbers when it comes to percentages of value and things of that nature. So this card here, Paul George, has been doing great. I think we'll continue to see his card go up. And I, I think we'll probably see a value of Kawhi Leonard's card go up as well. But Kawhi Leonard's card has been pretty steady in value. But this guy... Paul George, 2010 Don Russ rated rookie card, has seen the biggest leap in value over the playoffs this year. So we had two Suns, two Nets, and a Clipper. Now we did see some increase in the card market with these five players that we talked about today, but the real question remains, was it the spike we were expecting when we were looking at the playoffs in March, in April, and in May? I wasn't expecting much of a bump because of the fatigue that fans, collectors, and investors have had with basketball over the past year. We've seen a lot of basketball on television, and we had the NBA season last year end on October 11th. The new season began on, on December 22nd, so about two months of a layoff, a very, very short layoff in between seasons, and so we've been exhausted with a lot of basketball coverage this season. Now, do I believe there's still growth to be had in the sports card market for basketball moving forward in the playoffs? Yes, I still believe there is potential for growth. If we see performances similar to Kevin Durant's performance against the Milwaukee Bucks in game five, scoring 49 points, I still think that we'll see some performances reminiscent to that heading into the conference finals and the NBA finals this year. But I do expect a huge bump in the card market 
for the football season. I still believe the fatigue is still there for the basketball, but when football comes around, once the national comes around, that will give us a good indication of what to expect heading into the fall. Now, I'd like to know what your expectations were for the card market heading into the NBA playoffs and what you thought of the NBA playoffs so far. Let us know in the comments below. We'd love to get your thoughts. And also, if you like this video, hit that like button, click the subscribe button, and push that notification bell so whenever we drop a new video, you will be the first to know about it. Thanks again for watching this week, guys, and we look forward to seeing you all next week.